Okay, good afternoon, everyone. I'm going to call the meeting to order, that being the regular council meeting of Warwick Township Council, June 12th, 2023 at 3.30. Council, does anybody have any pecuniary interest or conflict of interest they'd like to declare? Seeing none, I'd also like to welcome everybody who's tuning in through YouTube. And now I'd like to do our acknowledgement of ancestral lands. Ancestral lands. We acknowledge that the land on which we are gathered here today, Township of Warwick, is located on the traditional lands of the Anishinaabe, as well as the many indigenous nations in Ontario whose footsteps have marked them for centuries. We also wish to acknowledge that we are situated on Treaty 29 and Treaty 25 territories signed by Chippewa chiefs and offer our respect and gratitude for these lands. Next order of business, number five on the agenda is minutes of the previous council meeting. Any questions or comments, council, on those minutes? If not, I would entertain a motion. Councillor Morris, moved by Councillor Morris, seconded by Council Westgate. All in favor? That is carried. Thank you. And there's no business arising from those minutes, Madam Clerk. Thank you. And then we go to seven council and that's scheduled meetings and events. And they're listed there. If anybody has any questions, uh, just talk to staff or anybody has a problem, let us know. And then 7B is other meetings. And I guess the only other thing on our radar screen right now is AMO. And that's the 2023 Association of Municipalities of Ontario Conference, August 20th, 23rd, and it's in London. And we do have, I think we've requested four delegations for that meeting with ministers. So anybody have any questions on any of those? Not seeing, great. Let's move right along to number eight if we can. Councillor's commitments and items. Uh, first off, councillor commitments and dates. Does anybody have anything they wish to add to the list that we already have? June 22nd, 20, to July, or June 27th to July 2nd. On. Thank you, Councillor Westgate. So we'll make note of that. Uh, seeing there's not another, there's no others, I will move on. Uh, Councillor items and verbal updates. I'm gonna start with Councillor Manning. Councillor Manning, did you have anything for today? I have nothing. Deputy Mayor Kallenberg. I have nothing. Councillor Morris. Yeah, I have three items. Um, um, at our rec meeting last week, it was brought up about some of the Watford and Warwick sidewalks were in a bit of a safety concern. I just wondered when was the last survey we did on the sidewalks and are we due for another one? Uh, through the mayor, um, we do uh, an inspection on the sidewalks every year. Um, I'll have to look when, the, I believe it's we do it in the fall. Um, so it would, the next one wouldn't happen until the fall, but we can have a look if, and uh, see if we can identify any safety hazards. Thank you. In Watford and Warwick, that's where I was requested. Um, the other one was that we also got a concern with um, people, and it was actually a transport parking on the walkway along in Warwick and Egremont. There's an extended kind of lane there, and I guess people have been parking on it near the village. Now, when I went out and had a look at it, of course, there was nobody parked there. So I'm hesitant to put up no parking signs closer to the ballpark because they need that because they don't have enough inside parking. But maybe we should get a look at public first, maybe could look at putting a couple signs near the village. Andrew, do you want to speak to that? I think, is, or any questions? I guess just, just a clarification. So you're speaking about the portion of the extended shoulder that's by the ball diamond? Um, to my knowledge, so, so parking is, is permitted there. And so. Okay. The concern this person had was they're walking and they got to start walking out into traffic to go around these parked vehicles. Now that's the only thing, knowledge I know about it, but I asked to bring it up. Amanda, please speak to us. Uh, thanks, Mayor Case and uh, Councillor Morris. 
Um, I do believe I'm familiar with the, the truck uh, you're referring to in that area. We have had a complaint about it, uh, and it has been referred to by law enforcement. So uh, it is my understanding they're working to reach out to the owner of the vehicle uh, to educate them on requirements and, of course, uh, enforce uh, with ticketing as required. Thanks. And more should last but not least, um, we had quite a discussion at the Parks and Rec meeting on waiver of fees for any of our buildings or facilities. Is there a policy at all? And if there is, could you get it to the Rec Committee, please? Ryan, would you like to take this one? Ryan? Yeah, thank you, Councilor Morris. Uh, I'm not so much, I, I don't believe I'm aware of an actual policy. We do have um, the application form, um, but just to, to take Councilor Morris's point a little bit further, I think through the committee, it's something that we're looking to establish and put some more formal guidelines around that, you know, through a policy that in turn, our application form that we currently have would, would accompany that. Just give us all a little bit more, um, sort of clarity and guidance on on the policies and processes and and guidelines around around such a such a request um so if i could i, I think that would be something that perhaps um our department parks and recreation be directed to to pursue in association with clerk's department as well and and do a further review and, and bring that back to the parks and recreation committee for review thank you very much that's all i have Okay, and uh, just based on what Ryan said, I, I agree 100%. It would make it so much easier. I get calls from folks, and they're you know they're, they're quoted at certain rates. To utilize the hall, and the next thing you know, it's it's way more than they ever dreamed it would be. And uh, here we go through this whole back and forth again with folks. It'd be so much easier if we had a process in place that said, you know, this is what your rate is if you're this organization. This is what your rate is if you're that organization. Here's an special exemption. Here's what you have to, you know, to be able to be eligible. Here's how you have to be able to apply for it. I think it would make it a lot easier. So that's great. Look forward to seeing something back on that. Thank you. Councillor Westgate. The only thing I was wondering about, I see the graded behind the buildings here the other day. Before the building, the owners had to pay for that or... Is that the way it is now? Because we have the other alleys that should be done in town if that's... Thanks, Councillor Westgate. And uh, thank you for identifying uh, a gap in actually the information that went to Council about that um, alleyway and my apologies for that. So um, as part of the 150th celebrations, uh, the planning committee identified a need to use uh, that alleyway specifically uh, to uh, provide a thoroughfare between the main uh, location of the downtown uh, events in front of the fire hall and museum uh, to the vendor market that will be behind uh, the municipal office in the parking lot. So at the request of the planning committee, um, the business owners of that one alley only uh, were approached uh, and asked for permission to do some improvements in that area to make it safe uh, for walking and creating like a pedestrian thoroughfare for the event. So uh, it was described to those business owners as a, a one-time uh, only um, kind of improvement uh, to support the 150th celebration. So at this time, it has not been offered to any other locations uh, because the businesses were kind enough to grant us um, permission to use that space. Oh. No, thank you. That's something I want to hear anyway. Thank you. All right, and Council, I just have a few things. Um, continue to work with the Minister of Transportation federally's office on the CN drainage issue and uh, talked to them last Friday. We'll be getting word tomorrow on a date for that meeting. We've been waiting on this meeting for quite some time. It's just a very slow moving process when you get to the senior levels of government, especially the federal, but I was told that we would know tomorrow when that, when that meeting would happen. Also, we're dealing with uh, Hydro One on the lack of three-phase hydro in the rural area of our municipality. Had a very good discussion with the director of Hydro One uh, with some assistance from uh, Minister McNaughton on getting us together and hope to find and identify some of those areas and find a way of dealing with that because it really is hurting a lot of our businesses out there. 
uh, when they try to use welders and so on, and they break, uh, the breakers go off constantly. So we're looking to identify those places and see if we can find a way to get that to happen. And we also continue to work with the Ministry of Energy's office on the natural gas situation in our municipality. Again, it's not a it's not a fast pace type of situation by any means, but we continue to move through it, and we still await the new phase of requirements that the provincial government will be putting out for funding for which we need to be able to move forward. So, the only other thing I had was, and I think council also received the email. I and we had an email from a one of our ratepayers asking about the Christmas lights that uh, go up and down Main Street and uh, wondering about uh, maybe it's time to replace those Christmas lights with something newer. Um, I don't know if previous council have dealt with something like that, a request like that, but it was an email. I don't know if everybody got it or not. I got it, and I just assume council got it as well. So I request for us to look into the possibility of putting up new Christmas decorations along the uh, Navu Road Stretch Main Street. And I didn't know if anybody else had got that request or had ever previous council had dealt with that. So does anybody remember, uh, Ryan? Uh, yes, thank you, Mayor Case. Um, just further to that, it was discussed um, uh, through the Parks and Recreation Committee as well um, as a as a project for uh, Parks and Recreation to to investigate and look into and come up with some options and alternatives um, and do a, a refresh and an update of of the Christmas decorations on Nabu. Um, so I can take you know additional direction um, today on that matter, um, but something that we can certainly investigate. I'm wondering, should we have a, a, a direction, do you think, Amanda, is, is good enough, or do we need a formal motion to have Ryan to investigate that? I'll leave it for some advice from you. Uh, thanks, Mayor Case. I think at this point, uh, as we do have a formal request, I think, from Parks and Recreation Committee on the on the books, I think direction from Council is uh, is adequate. All right. Well, thank you very much, Ryan. We'll look forward to hearing some of the suggestions from the, uh, from the board and from staff. Thank you very much. And that's all I had. We'll move on to nine, and that's staff items. And the first one is a verbal update from Amanda Goebbels on the Emergency Management and Civil Protection Act compliance results. Amanda? Uh, thank you, Mayor Case. Um, I did want to uh, take the opportunity to share with Council uh, that the Township of Warwick uh, did meet all uh, compliance requirements for uh, 2022 emergency management. Uh, so we file annually as part of that process uh, and were provided the um, approval letter as attached to the agenda. So just wanted to share that information. Thanks, Amanda. And no questions from Council? Don't see any. Let's move on. We'll move on to 9B, and that's a verbal update from Amanda as well on the Canada Postal Code timeline. Amanda? Uh, thank you, Mayor Case. Um, also wanted to update Council to advise that uh, we have uh, followed up a few times with Canada Post uh, it, about re Council's request uh, to review the use of postal codes uh, being mandatory on or not postal codes, PO boxes on, and that's wrong on the agenda, my apologies, uh, PO boxes uh, in Watford, uh, and did hear that they did receive all their required information. So the, the letter that council sent and the resolution was received, uh, it is in review, and we can expect to hear back from Canada Post in the fall. So in the meantime, we do encourage any residents to uh, uh, contact us with concerns and to submit tickets into Canada Post. Uh, let us know the, the numbers of their tickets, and we're happy to also assist with expediting those through Canada Post. Thanks. Thank you, Amanda. Anybody have any questions? Seeing none, we'll move on to 9C, and that's another verbal update. It'll be from Amanda, and it's on it's on the proposed process change to correspondence on council agendas. Amanda? Uh, thank you. Uh, so in preparing for this meeting, Heather, our deputy clerk, and myself identified a very large volume of, cor of non-action correspondence items uh, on this agenda, and um, in reviewing it, we noticed that there were a lot of repeat resolutions, a lot of uh, notices of support from municipalities of other municipalities resolutions. Uh, so we we did kind of a review of today's correspondence. We attached it as has been our practice over the last uh, few years, but we thought we'd also provide a, a proposal uh, with the attachment to this item. You will see a list of the correspondence on this agenda with some red uh, 
uh, strike throughs, which are meant to indicate with uh, what could probably not be provided to council for information because it's already either been provided to council or it's a resolution of support for something you've already seen. But we didn't want to make that change without consulting with council. Um, uh, so we thought we'd propose uh, this uh, alternate uh, correspondence package for today, which does see what we believe are repetitive items or items that have already been provided to council uh, removed, uh, but we're open to feedback from council and whether they still wish to receive everything, of course, we're happy to uh, uh, provide it, but it would save some reading if that was of interest. Okay, I'll put it out there for discussion. Council, anybody have any comments? Council Morris. Um, I have no problem with changing it as long as we can still open the ones that are in black. Read them. A great comment. You're right. So you've been provided this section only provides the summary sheet. So you would still receive all of the ones noted in black in the same format as you do now with a hyperlink on your electronic agenda. So you just, if today's correspondence was done again, let's say with this new model, the items in red would not be available. But yes, the blue, the black ones would be. Thank you. Yes, Councillor Manning. Just for a point of transparency, will they still be available somewhere? So if somebody wanted to look up what we or what uh, staff decided to disregard, that it's still available somewhere to view? Great question. Um, at this point, our proposed process was uh, not to keep a registry of uh, correspondence that was uh, removed. But if that was council's wish for that reason of transparency, council meeting, we'd be happy to do so. Okay, so I guess what staff is really looking for, I mean, the clerk's department is looking for direction on whether we want to continue to see all of it. Um, again, especially when it's repeated and it's already been dealt with in the past, I can honestly see where the clerk's department would have uh, obviously some questions about that. I guess uh, question the council is, um, are you okay with what's being proposed by the clerk's department. Councillor Westgate. I guess I'd like to see it come out just like this with the red ones crossed out and we don't, we can't open it, but we could read it and see what, what it was. Like just the content or not the content of it, but who it was from. And if we wanted to look at it later on, we could see it. You know? Okay, anybody else have any comments about this proposal? So what I'm hearing right now is that, uh, unless somebody wants to uh, correct me, I, what I'm hearing right now is that we continue as on, but maybe as it was done today with it in the red and the other ones in the black. So is that the direction back to staff? Am I hearing everybody? Yeah, okay, very good. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Okay, Council, we're going to we're going to move on and we are at number 10 delegations, but we're about 11 minutes too soon. It is a timed event. We have some drains, quarter revisions and so on to deal with. So I'm going to go to number 11 accounts if I could. So I'll take everybody to accounts. I'll give everybody a chance to get there. And I'm going to ask, did anybody have any questions on the GL report? No questions on the GL reports. And then I'll ask the same thing. Is there any questions on the accounts payable? That being 11B on the agenda. Seeing no questions on either, then I would ask for a motion to approve both if council saw fit. Councillor Manning is moving, seconded by Deputy Mayor Cowenberg. All in favor, that is carried. Okay, let's, um, let's get into number 12, part of our consent agenda. And uh, we have some minutes here um, from uh, the meeting on May 18th, 2023. We also have minutes from the special council meeting of April 29th. Any questions on the first set of minutes, the May 18th, 12A minutes? Anybody have any questions on those? Okay. Anybody have any questions on the one, the, the minutes from May 29th, 2023? Very good. And then we have the minutes from the Parks and Recreation Committee of June 7th. Questions on those minutes? Anything that uh, 
Chairman Morris, you'd like to highlight of those minutes? No, I think the only um, part that was, you know, really important in that meeting was the discussion of the waiver of the fees. It was quite a good roundtable discussion, and I'm happy that uh, we're going to follow up on it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. And then we go to D, and that's surplus tax sales. Any questions on that particular piece of business, Council? Not seeing any. Okay. And then E is uh, it's an update on the Watford 150th anniversary celebration, which I think everybody in this room is involved with. Um, any questions on that? Okay. Very good. Thank you. A lot of hard work going into that by a committee of, I'm hearing over 100 people or volunteers of up to 100 people. Mr. Chairman, that's excellent. And uh, let's go to F, and that is June. And June is Parks and Recreation Month, and that's an update. Any questions on that update? You know, Ryan's put some effort into this. Ryan, anything you want to highlight? Yeah, thank you, Mayor Case. Um, yeah, nothing further to, or nothing uh, too much additional to report other than than what's already in in the report. Other than we just, I guess I can take this opportunity to um, recommend that the community gets outdoors through active participation and enjoy some of our great parks, places, and spaces throughout the township. And um, feel free to take part in our snapshot challenge. Uh, take some pictures. Uh, hashtag the Township of Warwick. Um, hashtag June is uh, Recreation and Parks Month. And just uh, basically show us, tell us how you utilize our, our great spaces within the community. Thanks, Ryan. Well done, especially since I put you on the spot like that. Thank you very much. The next one is G, and that's the Canada Day update. Anybody have any questions on that? So we roll out of one event, the big 150th, right into another in the Canada Day. Anybody have any questions on the Canada Day update? No, don't see any. Thank you. And uh, of course, we have the non-action correspondence. Did anybody want to pull anything out of the non-action correspondence? Councillor Morris. Well, as Amanda said already, there's a lot of repeats. Um, two, Amanda, I wonder if you could tell me what is meant by some of these people's concern with the surpluses from tax sales. Amanda or Trevor? Who wants to take that one? Oh, sorry, Trevor. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So and we get in. All then? Okay, that's all I needed. Thank Very you. good. Nothing else on the non-action? Very good. Thank you. If that's the case, then we're at the point where I would ask for a motion to receive and file. Then, Councillor Westgate, moving. Seconded by Councillor Morris. All in favor? That's carried. Thank you. Okay, let's, we got a few minutes yet until four o'clock, I guess six minutes. Let's go to 13 if we can. And this is reports and items requiring a motion. And, uh, Let's uh, go to action correspondence, if we could, please. That's 13A. And the first piece of correspondence is uh, 06115, and it's the 60th anniversary reunion committee request. And uh, that's the SS19. How does council wish to deal with that request of financial assistance? Anybody? Councillor Westgate. Well, I'm just not sure we should be involved in all the anniversaries for every section of the township. I was just wondering, could we just wave the fee of the hall or something? They are booking the hall. And do you want to take this or would you like Ryan to take it? Maybe if the opportunity of waiving the fee? Just back into what we were talking about earlier. Amanda? Um, thank you, Mayor Case. So uh, well, we have direction on file to update our uh, fee uh, review policy and uh, documents. We do have a document uh, that was initially uh, approved when we first put in a fee structure. And uh, I want to say 
2016 is my memory. Uh, and uh, the principles of that policy still are guiding uh, the decisions of the Parks and Recreation Department and our fee structures. Uh, and some of the principles that might be relevant here for Council uh, to consider are um, for community groups, uh, at uh, of with 50% membership of residents of the township of Warwick, uh, fees would be waived uh, and provided. I believe it's the parks and recreation rate, which is twenty dollars per event. Um, and I think that's the only principle that may relate here, um, but council does have the discretion uh, to make decisions on fee waiver requests. And while it's not helpful here, we we have had direction to uh, update uh, those principles. I'm not sure if that answers your question, though. That's Westgate. I guess it's not really a question. What I'm saying is, I I don't know whether council should be involved in donations to every community get together, <laughs> and this is kind of a community party or like a section of the township party. <laughs> So I believe, um, I believe in the past, perhaps we have waived the fee um, for this event in the past, if my memory serves me correctly. Um, so again, they're just asking for uh, some financial assistance for their event. And uh, I think, I don't, I could be wrong, but I think we have waived or reduced the fee for a building. I know they used to have it at certain property it would move around a little bit from what i understand i don't know a lot about it but uh, i think that's that's the request so i mean it's up to council council does have the authority to reduce the fee or waive the fee and we are going to be looking at a more exact process based on the discussion we've had earlier today Councilor morris i kind of agree with jerry a little bit i don't know where you'd stop once it starts every buddy that rents the hall would want to have their fee waived uh, um, use uh, my understanding it would be down to twenty dollars now that includes the kitchen well that doesn't give us much to cover our cleaning costs even i would recommend we cut the rate in 50 percent so are you making that a motion counselor yes i'll put that in a motion i have a seconder deputy mayor Callenberg. any <clears throat> any further discussion on the motion Seeing none, I'll call the vote. All in favor? Opposed? That's carried. Thank you. Okay. Watching the time, we're going to go on to the next one, which is 06116, and that's the Watford Legion request for support uh, as previous to the three dinners that were done and supported by, sponsored by Warwick Township Council before. So there is a request to basically do the same thing over again, from what I can understand, from what I can see here. How does council wish to deal with that request? Deputy Mayor, Deputy Mayor Kallenberg. Based on from what I heard, it went over very well and everybody enjoyed it. And I, I think we need to continue to do it. It was a great way to get the community together. I'll make that motion. Motion to support from Deputy Mayor Kallenberg. Is there a seconder? Councilor Morris is seconding that motion. Any further discussion on this particular motion? Amanda. Uh, thanks, Mayor Case. Uh, if our mover, Mayor or Councillor Kalmberg, may I ask, uh, just for a clarification, uh, when you are saying support, uh, so just the township uh, offered support in two ways to the event at the Legion. One was through a financial donation uh, to help offset uh, some of the costs associated with the event and the rental. And the other was uh, through uh, staff resources to organize, sell tickets, create promotional materials and schedule events. And then also to connect the Legion uh, with private restaurants um, as a kind of a pilot program. And my question for clarification is, uh, is council looking to continue that uh, staff resource engagement into the Legion's fundraising uh, program, or is it a financial donation only you're uh, recommending here? Deputy well, Mayor? I would say continue as we did last year with some financial resources and some staffing resources as well. Seconder is okay with that? Okay, um, very good. I'll call the question. I think the whole 
the whole gist of this whole thing, I think, was to get it started and to really get the Legion to carry the ball after the fact. So hopefully after, we're going to call the vote, obviously, but after this time, doing it a second time, which, again, we want to support the Legion, but hopefully after this time, maybe we can work with them a little bit more so where they can actually take it upon themselves to do some of this, uh, some of the stuff and contact the restaurants. And uh, again, we have to be protective of staff time to a certain extent too, but uh, very good. So I'll call the question all in favor. That's carried. Thank you. Okay. We're going to shift gears. We're going to come back to correspondence later on where it's four o'clock. We're going to move forward with uh, quarter revision first. So I'll take everybody to that. So we're back at four. Okay, so it's uh, my duty to say the to say the following. We need a motion that Warwick Township Council proceed into the quarter revision for the minor drain 2023 bylaw 32 of 2023. I need a mover and a seconder, please. Moved by Deputy Mayor Kallenberg, seconded by Councillor Manning. All in favor? That is carried. Thank you. Have any written appeals been received? Madam Clerk, none have been received. Does anyone present have any verbal appeals? Anybody present have any verbal appeals? Seeing none. Andrew, do you have any comments to make on this particular issue? I do not. Thank you. Since there are no appeals filed, the following resolution is to be passed. Motion that the quarter revision for the minor drain 2023 bylaw number 32 of 2023 be closed without changes. The report and that with the report and that we go back into open session. So I need a motion. Councillor Westgate, seconded by Councillor Morris. All in favor? That is carried. Thank you. The next uh, piece of business before us is the um, consideration of drainage report. And I'll proceed. We'll proceed into the consideration of the drainage rep range report for the Eastman Finert drain. Any petitioner has the right to withdraw from the petition. Does anyone wish to withdraw? Seeing nobody. Any other owners? Any other owners in the area requiring drainage have the right to sign the petition. Does anyone wish to sign the petition? Seeing nobody. Mike DeVos of Spreets and Associates, will you please explain your report? Where is He's right there. Sorry, Mike. Good. Thank you. How are you? Good to see you. <laughs> I was looking for you up here. Okay, Mike, the floor is yours. Um, yes, uh, this report was prepared in accordance with Section 78 for repair and improvement to an existing municipal drain. Uh, currently, the lower portion of the drain, which is an open channel, uh, crosses Lot 23 to get to a junction where the Hagel drain uh, meet together and become a, a private ditch or natural water course downstream of that. The landowner requested to have the drain relocated from its existing condition and location to the east property line uh, as the uh, the two different channels uh, segment the property significantly and, and hinder the agricultural cropping practice. Uh, we did consult the environmental agencies, the Conservation Authority and the uh, Department of Fisheries and Oceans prior to, to uh, commencing with the design. Uh, we have and are recommending um, relocating the channel, constructing a new channel on the, the west side of the, the property line, which is the, the same property that the existing channel is on, and constructing some erosion control measures at the bends to protect the water as it, it turns uh, from its current alignment north and then again heading west as it hits the Hagel drain. Uh, the, the, new drain the new drain will be an open channel with grass buffers on, on each side. And I'll stop and open up to questions. First off, I'll call upon Andrew, our drainage superintendent. Do you have any comments, Andrew? No, I don't. Thank you. Does anyone who's present wish to ask any questions or make any comments? 
Seeing none. So if the report is approved, the bylaws will, the bylaw will be given first and second reading uh, later in the meeting. Thank you for attending. And we'll move on now to the next drain, which is the Hagel drain. And we'll go through the same process. So we're gonna proceed into consideration of the drainage report for the Hagel drain 2023. Any petitioner has the right to withdraw from the petition. Does anyone wish to withdraw? Seeing nobody. Any other owners in the area requiring drainage have the right to sign the petition. Does anyone wish to sign the petition? Seeing no one. Mike DeVos of Spreets and Associates, will you please explain your report? Mike, floor is yours. Yes, uh, this report as well was prepared in accordance with Section 78 of the Drainage Act for repair and improvement to an existing municipal drain. Um, the open portion of the Hagel drain um, currently is covered by several different bylaws. It was uh, reconstructed and constructed at different times and different periods. Um, but the the landowner in lot 23, which is the same landowner as the Eastman Van Art project we just discussed, had requested that uh, improvements be made to the Hagel drain for two different reasons. One, to accept the new water coming from the relocated Eastman Van Art. So there'll be more water coming from a different watershed. So the channel would have to be enlarged and protected, but also due to the fact that the existing channel has sil silted in significantly in places. There is an existing uh, farm culvert that was in poor condition and not at the right elevation. And there was also erosion along the, the channel banks in several different places. Uh, so we did conduct a survey and come up with recommendations for the clean out and reconstruction of the entire open portion of the Hagel drain, starting at Arcona Road, heading downstream into the west half of lot 23. There was also a private crossing uh, downstream of the existing junction of the Hagel and Eastman Van Art, that it was in uh, not showing on any of the reports because it's not on a current municipal drain, but it is. Um, not to the correct size that it would be if it was part of a municipal drain. Uh, the grade of the, the laneway on top is quite low, so it would be considered a, almost like a low flow type crossing where water will overtop the crossing uh, in any sort of larger rain event. And uh, the landowner, we had designed a, a replacement to that with a, with a drive through low grade crossing without pipes. Uh, Pipes tend to do do clog quicker than than a, than a normal low grade crossing, but the landowner wished to keep the crossing and volunteered to lower the la the laneway top elevation to help accommodate that a bit. So it will remain private and was removed from the proposed work. So currently we are just looking at working purely as as maintenance and improvement to the existing Hagel drain. And I'll stop and open up to questions. Thank you, Mike. Uh, Andrew Maver, our drainage superintendent, do you have any comments? No, I do not. Thank you, Andrew. Does anyone who is present wish to ask any questions or make any comments? Seeing no one. Okay. If the report is approved, the bylaw will be given first and second reading later in the meeting. So I'd like to thank everybody for coming, and uh, we're done with the drainage piece of business today. Thank you. Okay, Council, I'll take you back to 13A, which is action correspondence. We've dealt with the first two. We're going to move on to 06117, the third piece. And uh, that's some correspondence from uh, Nancy Morgan on kitchen waste reduction programs and uh, basically looking at us to maybe investigate that on, on behalf of the municipality of Township of Warwick. How does Council wish to deal with that piece of correspondence? Let's see. Councilor Morris. Uh, refer to the uh, Parks and Rec management team. 
to investigate. Okay, we have a motion to refer it to Parks and Recreation. Um, okay, so um, just listening to our clerk, uh, she's suggesting maybe public works instead of recreation. Oh, okay. Councillor, are you okay with that? Yeah. So the motion would be to refer to public works. And uh, do we have a seconder to that motion? Yes, uh, Councillor Manning. Any further discussion? All in favor? That is carried. Thank you. And uh, then we have 06118. I don't see any comments on that particular. That's looking for a flag. We don't normally do that type of thing. Okay, we'll move on. And uh, we're at 06119. And that's um, a request for dust control for a special event from uh, John and Chris Van Ertz. How does council wish to deal with this request? I guess just a question for Andrew, how much, like, that's not a very big stretch, so it would be hard to organize to get somebody to come in and do it. Um, I, I, I don't think we'll have an issue. Um, they do have multiple sizes of trailers they can bring, so I, I anticipate that we can uh, we can arrange, we can work with the owners and our supplier to make this happen. Okay, saying that, I guess they're willing to cover the cost of that, so I'll make that motion that we allow them to do that. Motion by the Deputy Mayor. Do we have a seconder for this piece of business? Councillor Westgate, any further discussion? All in favor? That's carried. Thank you. And we move on to 06120, and that's a request for support from the North Lambton Child Care Center. Does Council wish to deal with this particular item? It's for uh, playground equipment uh, for the program at uh, St. Peter Canisius uh, School. Not seeing anybody on this particular one. Okay, we will move on to 06121. This is the Guardian Angels. Is this something we've supported in the past, Madam Clerk? It's on the list, is it not? Yeah. So when we do it, so it's part of our yearly grant process, right, Trevor? Yeah, to... Direction is for them to provide an email providing us a paper trail so that it goes on the file. So once it's on the yearly list, we just have to reaffirm that with them. So okay, so a motion, a motion is not necessary for this particular thing. They've gone through the process. Okay. I do think it's uh, I think it's a worthy cause, obviously, but I also think that it goes back to maybe we need to look at how we deal with these other requests when it comes to funding from other community events too. It's hard to pick and choose, pick one and not not the other. So it's probably something else maybe perhaps we need to look at, Madam Clerk, going into the future um, to make it easier. Because, I mean, when you look at the two of them, we've got another very worthwhile project in the North Lambton Child Care Center request. And then you've got this one, another worthwhile one. And that makes it hard when you have to start picking and choosing. So maybe we have to find a better process way of dealing with this. So just a comment. And uh, then we'll move on to the last one, 06122. And that's Brook Telecom, again, another request uh, from them. How does the council wish to deal with this request from Brook Telecom on our facilities once again? I guess I have a question. Are they still providing us with internet service free of charge, the arena and the parks and recreation? Ryan, would you like to answer that? Amanda? Uh, thanks, Mayor Case. Uh, they are currently, yes, uh, providing us uh, free Wi Fi at the at, at the entire uh, facility um, and actually as part of their uh, contribution to the East Lambton Community Complex, uh, they've expanded that service uh, and uh, through that donation and fundraising effort program. Thank you for the clarification. Deputy Mayor? Well, I, I guess in that situation, they are partnering with the township and the municipality. So I, I think we should partner with them to host this. It's going to bring some new people to the community and the community center as well. That's just my thought. I'll make that motion, yes. Do we have a seconder? So that's for giving the cost, right, Deputy Mayor? Correct. Thank you. Do we have a seconder to that particular motion? Council Westgate, seconding the motion. Further discussion? Councilor Morris. Well, I just I just noticed on here, I noticed at home too about the uh playground and splash pad. 
is that going to tie it up for our own local residents that want to use it the same day or like are they booking this splash pad or just the hall ryan uh, in terms of the splash pad, even if, even when there are special events in the park, the splash pad does remain open to the public. Um, so it's my understanding that splash pad would remain open to the public during this time as well. All right. Any other questions before I call question? Call the vote. Seeing none. All in favor? That is carried. Thank you. Could I have a motion to receive and file the remainder of the correspondence, please? Councillor Morris, Councillor Manning, all in favor? That's carried. Thank you. Okay, let's move on to 13B if we can, and that's the uh, uh, joint farmland lease agreement uh, with waste management and the township. Uh, and again, looking for, I'm sorry. We have another timed event at 415. What is that one? Yes, on oh, I'm sorry. sorry. I'm sorry. I... Jumped around. Okay, <laughs> because we're jumping around so much, we do have the um, Bayfield Asaba group here today to talk to us. Sorry about that, folks. We uh, got into the uh, correspondence in such a big way that we passed you. So please come up and join us. And again, my apologies. I'm sure whether you're going to buy it. Well, you never know. You're, if you're asking for money, you never know what might happen. <laughs> So anyways, welcome folks. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so the floor is yours. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, first of all, um, um, introductions. Um, I'm Brian Horner. I'm the general manager at the Solid Bayfield Conservation Authority. Um, and I got Mary Belize, um, our healthy watershed manager. I'm gonna start, try to talk about our, the uh, draft cost portion agreement, like in a general terms and maybe numbers. And if you have any really specific questions on some of the programs, I'm gonna turn you over to Mary that she can really answer them. Um, but again, thanks for having us. I, I, I gotta be honest, it's, uh, as, you, as you're as you aware, we uh, you share a, a member and your member uh, um, from Lampton Shores, Dave Marsh, I invited him to come today, um, but he was unable to, to attend. So again, I haven't really been here. I've, I've been on through Zoom a little bit, but I don't recognize all the faces, but it is nice to see everybody in person. Um, so if that's being said, I'll just get right into it. You should have, I'm hoping that the documents that I sent, everybody has it. So I'm going to try to go through it the best I can. If you have a question on certain pages, by all means, ask me or Mary. Um, but the first one, the first section, it's kind of like three sections. The first six pages, it's kind of a guide to our agreement. And actually I better, I get, I get back. I got to back up a bit. So just so you're aware, the actual, um, the province, this, this, Coming 2024, we are required to have um, cost apportioning agreements with all our member municipalities to levy to in order for us to be able to levy some of our programs and services. So that's what we're here to talk about today. Um, when I say that, we, the province considers them category three, and for some of those descriptions on that first, the on page two of the actual. Um, page it says the category of programs and we got kind of a breakdown of one two and three and three we got four service areas and those service areas are going to back 15 years ago we actually came up with a, um, a conservation strategy and we reached out to some 30 um, landowners and stakeholders in our watershed and they came up with you know we asked what do they want us to be doing and I'm going to be honest the four items that the province have said that are non-mandatory or category three, those are the ones that our local stakeholders, they want us to be doing. The stewardship, the monitoring, and the education programs. Okay. Page three of the, that you see is the financial considerations. And what I want to point out there is this agreement needs to be in place for 2020, by the end of 2023, in order for us to levy our 2024 amounts. So what you see in front of you is 2023 budgets have passed, but anything else in the future, we have to have these agreements in by then or by the end of this year. The other part we'll say on this, the first six pages, page five, it's our, the map of our watershed. And we all know that we have a small portion that's, it, that's in Warwick. Um, and last one I'd like to draw your attention to a little bit on page six of it, it's got the table one. What I want to draw attention to there, so it's got 
the very bottom number in the second call or the third call, I guess I would say, the apportionment number about $204,000. That's the levy, our total levy of our category three items. And that works out to about 15% of our total levy that we levy to our member municipalities. So as you can see, Warwick's portion of that 204,000 is a small amount, the $960, and that was for 2023. But the other part of that table that's it's that like that we think is important, while it's $204,000 of local dollars, I'll say is in levy dollars, that 204,000, if you go to the very top of it, the second line says total cost of 1.263. That $204,000 of levy goes, we leverage that those dollars by another five, six times to uh, fund those programs that the province has deemed us to be non-mandatory non or category three. The next, let's say eight pages, that's the actual agreement that we, the draft agreement that we have in place right now. Um, and just for some little, uh, some background on that, we reached out to all 12 of our member municipalities and met with them. Now, a lot of them were in person, but this one, we met with Amanda and I believe it was there others. I think it was, anyhow, we threw Zoom back in the fall. And what you have in front of you is um, a, basically agreement that we um, put out then. And we had some feedback from some of our municipalities or for all of them. And we revised it a little bit, but this is what's in front of you. And I'll draw your attention. I mean, there's a couple of points in there. We've got this agreement in draft that says it's for initially a five-year term. And after that, it'd be four years. Every four years, you might ask, why is that? What we're proposing is that we have an agreement in place and that in the first ter term, it'd be five years. And that would work out to a midterm of the next council. So that each council, and then every four years, it would be like the second year of the council. And the re why is that? We're proposing that we put it in like that is because then we all realize in the first year, everybody's sometimes busy with the council, but then, then it will be every two, the middle term, and that's when we'd have it. So that's why we have those. And I will say in this agreement, we've had, um, we've met, this is our 10th member municipality that we've got, or that we, sorry, got, that we went to and presented. We of the first nine, we've actually have agreements, similar agreements signed with five of them, and our sixth one is being um, recommended shortly, and that's with your uh, neighbor, the Middlesex Center. They're in the uh, um, they're fortunate that they have five CAs in their uh, uh, that they deal with, and they're trying to get all their agreements all similar. So that's why you know they're on board with this, but they're still trying to. Um, work out some of the details so that's all somewhat consistent. The next few pages that you see, um, it'll talk about uh, the, with the service areas and Schedule A. This is a, uh, it's got some detail on this, on the programs, but it's really, it's the numbers that you saw on table one, just broken down by each, each uh, individual uh, um, service area. And the part that I want to address on this one, so while we have the agreement, we're hoping to do it every you know, first year five and then four years. This schedule A, we're proposing that it will be something that will still be coming back annually as part of our budgeting process. So we're not saying we're not saying we're okay, this is this is what we're saying. You're we're you're agreeing to those numbers for five years or four years. We're saying you agree to the services, but each year we'll be coming back with the actual dollar numbers. Okay. And the last couple pages, um, it just again, it's a it's a document that we used when we came to senior staff back in the fall, so we thought we'd include it as well. And it talks about some of our uh, programs as well, as far as and as well as percentages on some of the funding. You'll see on the last page, um, while well, I mentioned, while well, the province, province has uh, kind of the graph, while well, pro the province has category one as what they deem as mandatory, um, provincially mandatory, you'll see that that portion is where they're funding the smallest dollar number. And if you go down to category three, where they're saying is um, non-mandatory items, that's where we get the larger leveraging dollars that we show in there is that way. So with that, that's a snapshot of the agreement and the numbers. And I might let Mary, if, if, it's, if it's okay, yeah, I will let her talk to some of the other. Yeah. 
Hey, thanks very much for having us today uh, come and speak about watershed management with your council. I uh, appreciate very much that you have a number of things on your agenda frequently, and, and it's quite a variety of things that you're tasked with managing. And when issues around the environment come up, it's sort of what now, here we are. Um, so I just want to explain a little bit about watershed management and the benefits provides your constituents. And that is just that when we use our landscape uh, there are many, water is often a byproduct of that. So whether that's in an urban area or a cultural area, water is something that is sort of a secondary consideration. And of course, at the site scale, it's just a little bit of water and it doesn't really add up to very much. But when we look at uh, issues with respect to water, flooding, erosion, water quality issues, uh, habitat issues, it's really the accumulation of all of the water from the little places that adds up to uh, bigger issues downstream. And the way that we can manage those things is not by telling people what to do, it's by providing them with stewardship opportunities, best management practices, education, information to figure out ways to best manage that water so that it isn't causing some of these downstream issues that we hear about. So that is the background on some of these programs that I think are relevant for folks. So um, now Brian's provided the financial considerations for the, um, the cost of portioning agreement, and there's some, I've provided a little bit of background on watershed management. And I recognize our area Flows, our area flows up to the up the Asable, up into Ground Bend, and may not be as recognizable to you folks, but it is your area certainly is contributing to to our watershed area, and we're grateful for the opportunity to come and speak today. All right, well, thank you very much, Brian and Mary, for your presentation. Does Council have any questions of our guests today? Seeing none, you did such a good job on your presentation and on the written work you sent it forward. Nobody has any questions. So thank you very much for coming and uh, we do appreciate your time. Safe trip home. Thank you. Thank you. So council, I'm going to take everybody back to, uh, let's see where we were at here. I believe it was 13B. So we're going to go back to 13B on the agenda, and that's the joint farmland agreements. And uh, we're looking for direction on this particular issue. Um, or staff is looking for direction. Uh, anybody have any questions, comments? Councillor Morris. Yeah, um, we've had this before we, where we've extended the year, but I never remember asking for more money. I think we should either leave it at the 300 or retender it. I don't think it's fair to ask them for more money in mid sentence. I mean, yes, uh, Amanda, please. Um, appreciate those comments. And um, that is absolutely true. We would not uh, typically look at adding or increasing the price to just be extending on the same uh, terms as are in the agreement. Okay, anybody else have any questions on the land lease? Seeing none. So again, we are looking to move this forward. So we're looking for some direction from council back to staff. Councillor Morris. I recommend we uh, extend the lease by one year to um, John Van Gorp. Or I think it's John, isn't it? And um, at the same price and bring it up for tender next year. Or the year after, I should say the crop year. So we have a motion on the table. Do we have a seconder to that motion? Deputy Mayor Kallenberg is seconding it, seconding the motion. Do we have any further discussion on the motion? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All in favor? That is carried. Thank you. Let's go to uh, 13C if we can. And that's a follow-up on proposed amendments to Township Warwick Parking Bylaws. There's some recommendations there council's consideration or council can come up with one on their own any comments on the on the um, proposed amendments to the township parking bylaws anybody i guess maybe i'll start i don't see anybody um i look at this and i i think i can easily support myself i can support um, increasing the fines from 40 to 60 dollars I think there's nothing wrong with that. 
as far as the structure of the, as far as the fee structure for the past itself, uh, we are seeing some tough economic times out there with uh, increases everywhere else. I, I don't see the benefit really in in increasing that fee from fifty to a hundred dollars. Like I say, I do support the the raising of the fees when it comes to the tickets. That makes a lot of sense. Um, and uh, that's where I'll start the discussion. Uh, I'll ask anybody else to to jump in, perhaps, if they can. So that would be take two out and uh, two out and three and leave the fee status status quo and uh, have the tickets increase from 40 to 60 would be my thoughts on it. But I'll ask for everybody else's opinion. Anybody else have an opinion on that? Understand where I'm, where I'm going? Perfect. Mm -hmm. Councillor Westgate. I guess just a question. We are going to still give out the parking passes. Then. Yes. Because I think we'd probably have problems for a little while. If we wanted to do away with it, if that was our plan, we should tell them within two years that we're going to do away with it. Uh, if we want to look ahead and do away with it. But I'm not so sure we need to. Uh, or are they causing a big problem? Andy, do you want to take that? Uh, great question, Councillor Westgate. Um, so initially, uh, when this when a previous report on this matter was brought to council, the recommendation was uh, at that time to remove uh, the parking permit passes uh, because of some issues and concerns that were shared primarily by our public works operators. Um, Council did ask us to look uh, a bit further into that and to contact the current pass holders. So after doing that, we've uh, noted that a number of properties that obtain parking passes physically do not have an alternate uh, an alternative parking solution. So that's why we revisited this and um, proposed a different structure as opposed to elimination uh, of the pass itself. So we're proposing to keep the pass. The proposal um, uh, does propose uh, some increased fees uh, and ticketing as well as continued uh, enforcement, which was, uh, I would say, also lacking in the past. So that will do a great deal on its own to address the concern from our public works team. Thank you, Amanda. So yes, uh, unless somebody wants to um, to suggest something else, it would be to leave the past situation in place um, again and, uh, and move forward. So if anybody else has any word, I, I would propose a motion that we that we do um, uh, leave the uh, pass uh, situation as is, the same price, status quo, and that uh, we increase the fines from forty to sixty dollars, and uh, keep it that simple, and uh, go from there. If I have a seconder to that, so we have a councillor and uh, councillor Manning. Further discussion. So is staff clear on the motion? I am clear. We just haven't lifted it from the table. I know. We've got to back the bus up there. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to ask for a motion to lift this from the table. Councillor Morris, seconded by Councillor Westgate. All in favor? That is carried. And now we'll move on to the motion that, uh, that's been presented. And further discussion on that motion? I'll call the question. All in favor? That is carried. Thank you. All right, let's go to 13D if we can. And this is a uh, proposed littering and dumping bylaw for Warwick Township. Does anybody have any questions on 13D? There is a recommendation there for council's consideration that it looks like a lot of work went into it. And also one of our rate pairs who made the suggestion. Does anybody have any questions on 13D? Councillor Westgate. I just thought we did have a dumping and one in place before. Amanda? Oh, actually, uh, Councillor Westgate, when the an issue initially came up from our uh, ratepayer who delegated to council, you, I recall you saying the same thing. And as a result, I did look <laughs> quite extensively uh, and I uh, could not find one. However, I think it's possible there might have been one for the town of Watford prior to amalgamation, but I'm still unable to find it. So that's why we continued with preparing a new one um, and it would supersede uh, anything that was put in place in the past and also allowed for an updating of a, of a previous bylaw we were unable to locate. It may be a long time ago, but I'm sure when bag tags went in, 
we did put one on at the same time, but that would be 20 some years ago. <laughs> All right. So there is a recommendation for council's consideration. How does council wish to deal with the with the recommendation? Councillor Morris, I move the, uh... moved by Councillor Morris. Do we have a seconder? Deputy Mayor Kallenberg is seconding it. Any further discussion? All in favor? That's carried. Thank you. Okay. Let's go to thirteen uh, E. This is proposed changes in the fire dispatch services. There's a recommendation there, and we do have our chief here and also commander of the county fire group. I'm sure that's not the title. Brad, do you want to come up just in case there's any questions? I can. Yeah, sure. <laughs> come on up. Yeah. So... Council, you have the information in front of you, and there is a recommendation. Did anybody have any questions? We do have our chief here, as well as uh, Brad's involvement uh, with uh, the county where he is. Uh, Brad, exactly what is your title with the county? You're the coordinator, I believe? Yeah, the provincial uh, fire marshal's coordinator for mutual aid. Thank you, Brad. So did anybody have any questions? There's a recommendation, but we do have Brad here. Did anybody have any questions on this new agreement for Brad today? I guess, Brad, are you okay with us? Like you, yes. Like I said in the report, um, we've had great service provided by the Wallsburg Dispatch since 1992. However, times have changed. The call volume of the EMS has gone much higher, and their staffing levels have not increased. Um, this will be a full fire service dispatch. So complete monitoring of all the calls, um, uh, full report of every transmission on the radio we will now get. And so it, it clears up any liability concerns for a lot of different things that way too. So it's, it's, it's most of the province is already there in this exact same service. So it's, it's definitely time that we move forward too. All right, thanks, Brad. Yes, Deputy Mayor Kellenberg. I guess based on what, from my understanding, when the call has been made to you guys, there'll be somebody closely working with the department for the whole time. That's right. The dispatchers uh, in the new service agreement with Sarnia Police will monitor every transmission uh, from start to finish of the call. Whereas right now, currently, we have a call answer, a call dispatch and then they close off and go back to the EMS calls. So um, they answer our call back in there when, when they have time, but uh, sometimes their time's pretty valuable with EMS calls. So, yeah. All right, thank you. Did anybody else have any other questions? Brad, while we've got them here. Okay, Council, there's a recommendation before you. How do you wish to deal with the recommendation? Deputy, I'll, I'll, Deputy move the rec nah, I'll move the recommendation as presented. Thank you. By the Deputy Mayor, seconded by Councillor Westgate. All in favor? That is carried. Well, thank you, Brad. Appreciate you being here today, and uh, thank you for the good work you're doing. Very thank much you. appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, let's go to um, F, site plan deposit policy. And the first thing I'm going to do is ask for a motion to lift this from the table. <laughs> so, uh, Councillor Westgate, seconded by Deputy Mayor Kallenberg. All in favor of lifting? That is done. Thank you very much. And there are some options that have been made available to us. So Ken, Johan, you're both welcome to come up. Johan, Johan's flying solo today. So Johan, our planner, will, will be joining us here. We'll give you a second to get set up, Johan. Thank you. So that is 13F. And uh, what we'll do is... Uh, there are some options there, and maybe what I'll do is, uh, Johan, I'm going to give you the opportunity just to maybe go through those motions once again, uh, those recommendations, pardon me, with council, and council realizes they can accept this or come up with something on their own uh, when it comes to this. So, Johan, the floor is yours, please. Thank you. Um, leadership. Good afternoon, respected members of council and the viewing public. I'm here today before you 
to provide supplementary information regarding the site plan deposit policy options that were presented during the previous council meeting. As a, as a quick refresher on what those options were, there was three options. The first option was a cost percentage option. So how the site plan deposit was um, calculated was it was a sum of 100% of the site works on municipal land plus 20% of the site works on private land. That's the first option. The second option was a sliding scale. So it's an increasing percentage depending on which cost category it fell under. So if um, the site works is under $50,000, it will be 20%. If it, it is between $50,000 and $300,000, it would be 25%. And if it's above $300,000, um, the percentage would be 30% and that would be the cap. And the third option was um, a combination of both of these options. So um, for the site works on municipal lands, that will be 100%. And plus for the site works on private land, that will be the sliding scale as mentioned in the second option. Um, there were questions uh, brought up in the uh, previous council meeting. Um, Council requested to see how the site plan deposit options would work with phased development using examples. And the examples um, requested were the 79 Autoshine Inc. car wash and the home hardware expansion project. Regarding the car wash, that project was not phased. So we can't use that as an example. Regarding the home hardware expansion project. So that project was phased, but um, for the purposes of using it as an example, the site works were all in the first phase. So in that scenario, it would just be, we would take a deposit at the beginning of the first phase for that considerable amount. And uh, that deposit is returned at the end of that, that phase. Um, as there weren't any proper representative examples, we've cr created a hypothetical. So taking that example, so the site works was $350,000 for that project. We thought, okay, let's split that amongst three phases and see how that would work. Um, so our assumption was $200,000 for the first phase, $75,000 for the second phase, and for the third phase, $75,000 again. These are the site works costs. And also with a caveat, um, out of the $200,000 from the first phase, $45,000 um, is work on municipal land um, with $155,000, that's the remaining of the $200,000 on private lands. So using these assumptions, we have done the calculations and plotted it out with the various options. And I believe you have a slide to show that. Yep, um, can we go to the third slide? Yep, and this is how um, that would look with option one, option two, option three, and how much it would be per phase. So the nice thing about this is with a phase development, you can considerably reduce the upfront uh, deposit. And this was just a hypothetical example, depending on what the, the developer is working with and what their constraints or what they can do, they can move these numbers around depending on what the, the, the development asks for. Um, a quick note to make on this, even though the second option looks like it's the cheapest option, um, it may not always be the cheapest option because let's say there is site, site works more than $300,000. In this example, we use, it was 25%, but in this example, over $300,000, it would be 30%. So it would be larger. Or if there was, or and if there was no um, site works on municipal land um, in that scenario or in the other scenario, which is above $300,000, the first option may end up being cheaper. So. Um, I get I let I give up that to council's consideration. Uh, another question that came up was, how would the site plan deposit policy work um, in light of overlapping phases? So in that scenario, um, nothing would change. We would take a deposit at the beginning of the phase, cater to that phase, and if the site works is finished according to the site plan agreement, to the satisfaction of the municipality the deposit will be returned. We cannot return the deposit before um, before that because then the deposit won't serve the function of a deposit. Um, so in light of 
phases overlapping, we may get into scenarios in which um, we would have to take multiple deposits. Um, it's up to the, the developer what they can do with this information. If they have capital, they can have phases overlapping. If not, they can split the phases up and have it one after the other. Uh, with that, I conclude my presentation and I'm open to questions. Well, thank you very much, Johan, for that presentation. Does anybody have any questions for Johan on his presentation on the three options? Or as I said before, a council can come up with an option on their own. I believe one, once upon a time ago, it was $10,000, a straight $10,000. And uh, of course, uh, I think it was uh, previous council actually made the made the changes and then we made an adjustment since we've been together uh, this first year. So I guess I'm asking for council, Frank. Yes, Councilor Morris. I think with these figures you've given us, we would have lost the expansion at home hardware. I don't know which scale or which one is the best. I like the sliding scale option, but I think the numbers need to be cut by 50%. That's just my opinion. Thank you. Any other else? Anybody else have any comments? Councilor Westgate. I guess my preference would be uh, option number one and maybe cut 100% down of the uh, that 100% down a little bit. I don't know whether we need a 100% of what works done on our uh, property for site works and stuff, but we know they're going to have to tie in the sewers and stuff and, and repair everything, the curbs and stuff. It's going to have to be done before they can go on there. Do we really need to have 100% of their money tied up? Thank you very much. Anybody else have any comments? And I'll either ask Johan or Ken to maybe address some of those comments. Anybody else have any comments? Yes, Deputy Mayor. I would agree with uh, Jerry on that as well. I think that number's a little high. I do like option one, but uh, I think the municipal property value is a little high. Very good. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes, Councilor Manning. Yeah, I, I'm exactly in agreement with everybody on that. I think the rate of 100% is way too high. It's a lot of capital for any investor to have sitting idle while they're waiting, no matter what phase of the project is. I think we would uh, really, really scare off a lot of investors with that rate. Thank you, Councillor Manning. Okay, I'll throw it over to uh, Ken or Johan. I'll let you guys decide who's going to speak to it and uh, maybe address some of these comments. Ken, is it going to be you? Um, perhaps Ken. I'll start your worship. If Thank, that's you. Okay. Nope. And then Thank you. Thank you very much. Johan can, can jump in. Um, so council, I'm, I'm going back to the original report, um, that Johan submitted in terms of the, um, sliding scale or sorry, cost percentage option. I'm going to start with Councillor Westgate's concerns and then I'll, I'll jump over to Councillor Morris's. So what was proposed and, and Johan will, will jump at me if I get this wrong, but I'm going from, from the report. Okay. So projects that were under $50,000 in value of all works, regardless of whether public or private, it was recommended to be 20% of the total cost of, of those works to a maximum of $10,000. So that was, sorry, Johan, did I get that wrong? Um, that was a sliding scale option. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I jump ahead of one? Uh, oh, yes, I did. Sorry, my mistake. Um, so the, the cost percentage option was any works on township property is 100% and then 20% uh, for works on private property. So as I understand your concern, Councilor Westgate, you were looking to reduce the percentage of work on township property to bring that number down. So, or, or one of, or possibly both. The one thing I would say to council is recognize that by reducing the, the amount for a deposit you take on your property, the risk then proportionally goes up for you as a municipality. So by asking a developer to submit 100%, then they are, they are covering that liability on your own property. However, you are asking for a very small number comparatively 
on private property. So what I mean is if if they were if the total cost of the work on township property is $100,000 and you're sinking 100% of that, which would be $100,000, you're asking for only $20,000 um, based on percentage for work on private property. Of course, that's not how the math will work because if the private property is 200,000, then the math would be 20% of that. Um, in terms of your comments, uh, Councillor Morris, the, with the sliding scale, we've provided, well, and in, in both, we've provided you a recommendation based on um, research of best practices. This is by no means meant to be, I'm sure there's a million other different options out there, but what we're trying to do is get counsel away from this situation of um, each time someone comes forward with a site plan, you're you're jumping into it because what that does is it creates inconsistency across the process and developers don't like that. What they want to know is each and every time this is the, the process that you're going to do. So we have no problem with, um, with council changing any of the numbers within the options that are provided. We just simply need to know that direction. And I think one of the, the key things that Johan presented to you with these options is when once we have those numbers, so whatever option you choose and whatever numbers that they end up being, once that's conveyed to the development community through the application form and process, that will help inform them on what works best in terms of do we phase the development and how do those phases break out or do we do it all up front what have you, because they're, they'll they understand the cost implications of whatever you choose. But I think I'll leave it at that too. And we're happy to guide you as you move forward with your decision. Thank you, Ken. Councillor Westgate. I guess the way I understand it, the site plan includes your curbs, your paving, your, your sod, your planning. We, we have control over most of that anyway, just by giving out a permit for them to open the place up or the business up. Where, where the site plan, where you need the money is at the end of the job because they get down and they get their driveway in and they get the curbs in, they get the building open. And then they, they forget about the trees and the shrubbery and the grass. That's what we need the money to cover because I'm pretty sure everything else is going to get done. So I guess what I'm looking at, I would cut, I'd like to have more for on our property, say the 75% and then down to 20% on their property. And I think we could still make sure that we had the money there to finish the job if need be, because usually it's only the finishing touches at the end that they don't get done, maybe a fence up or, or a hydrant that they didn't put in or something like that. So I worry more about making sure we got the company here and building and have some money left to finish the, make it pretty at the end if they don't. Well, Councillor Westgate, from what I'm understanding, you're talking about that option, but also shrinking the dollar amounts around it. You talk about the financial part of it, right? So, so if I may, so, worship, can you? Um, so if I understand what you're suggesting, Councillor Westgate, you are proposing option one, and then the township property amount would be 75% of the cost estimate, and then no change to the private property one. Um, the one thing to keep in mind, Council, is the more information that a developer has when they're planning the project out and consistency in the process, the more they can pre-plan what they're doing and understand the ramifications of costs. And this is where we've had a challenge that it has not been consistently applied. So I think regardless of what numbers you you choose, so long as the information that we have available online, so through the application forms, which we've been working with Stephanie to get updated all through this process, um, as long as that information's out there, then, then the development community will understand the ramifications. And there's always going to be exceptions where, you know, you know, unexpected consequences or situations arise. And frankly, when those happen, 
that is what this council is for, is we've run into a situation, we will bring it here and seek direction. Thank you, Ken. Did anybody else have any questions about the options or maybe a, another option? So I guess I'm looking for some direction uh, from council on how they would like to proceed. This is our second kick at this can. Doesn't mean we can't have a third, but I guess I'm looking for some direction. Councillor Morris. I'm still really hesitant on the amounts. I still think it's pretty heavy. Like it would have cost home hardware. I think if I read this right, 106,000. As Jerry said, lowering the township point from 100 to 75 would help a little bit, but I don't think the project would have went. And I don't want to lose any projects. I th Thank you, Councilor Morris. Deputy Mayor? Sorry, I, I just think that if somebody knows up front exactly what's going on, and I think we ran into that where maybe Kevin didn't know the total. He thought it was a lot less. He may or may not have proceeded, but I think if a developer knows up front what it is, and it's clear and consistent every time, and that's the first piece of paper they get when they come in for a site plan approval, then they're going to make the decision up pretty quick. That's just my opinion, but it may or may have not went. I don't know. Thank you. Johan. To your worship. Um, yep. Clarity was a major issue in these, these um, um, in both of those developments. But in the Kevin Karras scenario, if it was phased properly and if the site works were split amongst the phases, that big amount wouldn't be that big amount. It would be split amongst those phases. Yep. Thank you, Johan. Anybody else? Yes, Councillor Westgate. One other thing, the site work or most of the site work is the first thing done. So when they get three quarters of it done, they could ask for more money back. So the money's not tied up for the whole project either. Am I right? Ken? Uh, through your worship, yes, we can, we can adapt the site plan agreement to to that concept. The only caution that I would have is that when you get into these multiple phased projects, um, as you say, they will do most of the works, if not all, up front. The thing that we will need to recognize, and I think both Johan and I freely recognize that, is that in future phases, there will need to be um, very mindful inspection of that of, of those works into the subsequent phases so that if, um, depending on what's being proposed, there's no damage to any of that. And the language in these agreements can be modified to really address that as well. So if council wants us to start looking at um, the deposit for township property and works to kind of move faster than the deposit for say, stuff on private land, we can make that modification. I think um, if I'm not mistaken, and Andrew can correct me, the way that we do that is the landowner submits something from their engineer or or from their whomever their technical expert is to certify that those works are done. So that shouldn't be difficult language to change in the agreement. And we also have our engineers, we would look at it and say, yeah, they've got 50 or 80% done. I mean, that's our engineer can look at that in, in no time, tell us how much, what percentage they have done and what we should be given back. Amanda? Uh, thanks, uh, Councillor Westgate. Uh, the way our process is set up is that we do provide that requirement to the developer to provide an engineer's letter outlining the percentage. And then yes, our planners uh, do review it. And if they have concerns, they would reach out to our engineer. But if we have a letter from their engineers and our planners uh, see on site, the completion level and agree, have no concerns, we do, we would release it. So we don't typically involve ours. That's for that. All right. Thank you, Amanda. Okay, council, I'm gonna ask, is there any other questions or comments on the planning fee structure? And again, we've had a good discussion. I don't know if we're ready to move forward on this or not, but I will ask, does anybody on council wish to bring forward a motion? If not, we still have an awful lot on our agenda for tonight. I think I would ask to have it tabled again, if there's not a point of trying to move forward on this. 
we have had the information supplied to us, not putting any pressure on anybody, but I'm looking for some direction. Yes, Councillor Westgate. Well, I'm ready to make a motion. I, what I'm not ready on, I would like to go with number one, whether we go 75%, 60%. Uh, I'd like some input on the council on that percentage, and then I'm ready to make a motion. Like I said before, I would settle for 75 and 20, and that would probably be fair to everyone. Thank you, Councilor West Westgate. Uh, Councilor Morris. Okay, so if we went with number one, which is fine with me, the township property part is, is how, how much of the project is that? Like, Depends on the project. Depends on the project. It's, it's not a. It's not. Is it a large percentage of the first phase? On most phases, that's just to put curbs in, tie in your sewers, and do the boulevards. Okay. Uh your shrubbery and everything is usually in on the property. Water hydrants inside on the property would be on their property. Okay. So it would be maybe on most jobs, maybe 25 or 30 percent of yeah, the right. site plan work. Now we're not talking the whole project, no. we're just talking okay. site plan costs okay. here. And we've talked about the uh we've talked about the phase, the phased in approach where once this work is done, as Councillor Westgate has laid out. The option is for the developer to ask for portions of their money back, uh, along with a, as, as long as they provide a letter from their engineer um, outlining the request and the merit of the request. So there's an option to get the money back uh, as they move forward on the project as well. <clears throat> so again, I'm looking again, looking for direction. Councillor Manning. Yeah, I'm rather partial to option one as well. And, and again, where I get stuck is the same as that like Councillor Westgate is on the uh, the 100% on the first bid. I think that could easily go down to at 65 to 70% myself. Yes, Ken, and then I'll go to the um, deputy. Yes, thank you, Your Worship. I appreciate where Council is coming from on, on the portion related to township property. What I'm hearing from you in my... Um, brief attempt to be the Monty Hall of tonight and offer you options behind door number one, I would suggest that you would not drop below 50%, which is what I'm hearing council is sort of comfortable with in the low end. Of course, behind door number two, you don't want to go any higher than 75%. So I think there therein lies your range. The one thing I will suggest to you council is that um, to give you comfort, what you're seeing the fact that you're having this conversation is the fact that you are seeing more development happen. So this conversation was exactly what needs to happen. It's a logical part of addressing growth. So regardless of where you, what number you lie with or choose, um, and you can also choose what's behind the, you know, curtain number three and come up with something else too, but I think you, you've fallen to option one. Um, this process is an evolving process. So what that means is you could also pass a motion for us to monitor this process and come back and say, here's what we found after a year's worth of site plans. And it may only be one um, that here's how it worked, not my laptop. <laughs> um, here's how it worked out. And, you know, maybe we come back in a year's time as well, if that helps. But just know for your own comfort that this is not a conversation that's, you know, you're doing the right things here and having this discussion. Deputy Mayor Kallenberg. <clears throat> yeah, I was going to kind of allude to what Ken just said. I think we as a council, we can pick a number now and if it's 70 or 75 and in a year or two's time, if we feel that we're not getting the development we want, then we can always lower that number if we feel we're not getting the development we want. So that's just my thoughts. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. <clears throat> Anybody else? Councilor Morris. I agree with uh, John. I'm the opposite though. I'm saying start at 50 and move up to 75, but I agree with you in principle on that and come back in a year or whatever and revisit it if we have to. So just pick a number. It seems that that's where we are in this part of the process. Uh, 
uh, council. So, Councilor Morris or C Councilor Manning. Yeah, I'd just like to add that if we do go the year option, I'd like to make sure there is a quantitative measure that we can use to show what kind of businesses we may have lost during it. Not just saying that, well, this is what we have and this is what we don't have. If anybody backs out because of those numbers, or if we have anybody come in because the numbers are fair, if we could have some sort of measure of that, that'd be uh, that'd be handy. Thank you, Councillor Man. The only, the only the fear of all that, and it's always good to have those checks and balances. The fear of all that is you won't know sometimes. Mm -hmm. Somebody comes along and they say it's just too expensive, and uh, we're not going to we're not going to bother. And I think that's the fear that we all have to a certain point that we don't want to lose something because the price is too high. But on the other side, you got to have those they got to have those measures in place uh, to protect the municipality um, at the end of the day. But what I do like about what we've talked about today is that uh, as a developer moves forward, as Councillor Westgate said, and they get A, B done and say there's A, B and C to be done through that whole that whole um, that whole that whole thing, A and B are done. They refunded their money with a letter from their engineer as they go as they meet those merit points uh, during the project. So there is a way for them to get their money back quicker. They don't have to wait right till the end, where they've got a seven thousand um, dollar landscaping piece that's not done. They're, we're still sitting on a hundred thousand dollars of their money. They would have ninety thousand dollars of that money back, or whatever the case may be. And it would be just the last piece they'd be looking for. So I'm comfortable with that part of the process. Councillor Westgate, I'd like to make a motion that we go with option one: seventy percent for on township property, the twenty percent on private property. If and this is away from the motion, but. If we have a developer come in and they talk to Ken and say, oh, we're not going to do it if it's going to cost us this much, they have the right to come to council and ask for a reduction in it. So I don't think we should lose anything if our staff find out, oh, they're not going to do it because of our uh, site plan deposit. We can probably work something out with them so we do not lose uh, tenant or customer or Billing. So I'll make the motion that we go with number one. Would I say 70 and 20? I think you said 70. Thank you, Councillor Westgate. And uh, just uh, to be clear, that that ask on that the, the developers can, that still is there. They can come back and ask for a reduction in the fees. Am I correct, Ken? Uh, through your worship, you're correct. But what I would actually suggest then is if the concern that Councillor Morris and a few others have expressed about the number should be lower and you're concerned that that would that would cause a problem i would start at 50 and then move move up but that that would just be my my suggestion i defer to council okay. but yes you are correct they always have the ability to request to come to council okay so i do have a motion on the floor from councillor westgate do i have a seconder to that motion Deputy Mayor Cowanberg, any further discussion? God knows there probably shouldn't be, but there may be. Does anybody else have anything? I'm going to call the question. All in favor? That's carried. Thank you. Good discussion. Thank you, Ken. Thank you, Johan, for Thank all you, your work. Um, if very... I could just make one point before we go. Sure. I just wanted to draw the council's attention, uh, and I hate to put Johan on the spot, but um, as you know, Johan is the newest member of the team. This was also his first major project presenting in front of a council, both tonight and the previous evening. So just wanted to make council well, uh, aware of that. Yeah. Yes, thanks. Thanks, Ken. Actually, after the last meeting we had, I did uh, talk to Johan and, Johan and told him how good a job he did do. And we really did appreciate that. And he's very thorough on this process and this on this particular piece of business as well. So we think we we think we might want to keep them, Ken. <laughs> so we'll just we'll just put that out there. And you brought up the subject, Ken. So thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank yeah. you. Okay, Council. Let's go on to uh, 13G, if we could, please. And that's the pickup truck tender. And there is a recommendation on that. How does council wish to deal with uh, 13G? There's a recommendation. Councillor Morris. I make a motion to accept the recommendation if they're needed. That's a good price and buying them local. Thank you, Councillor. Seconded by Councillor Manning. Further discussion? All in favor? 
That's carried. Thank you. Yeah, we may end up being paying for those next year, but like hopefully we get them sooner. Okay, let's go to uh, let's go to 13H, and that's uh, a public uh, works update um, uh, from Andrew. And there's also a motion to receive a file, but we'll get him to maybe highlight Andrew. Thank you, Mayor Case. Um, I'd like to uh, go through the report and identify a few key items. Um, so in the uh, road operations, this time of year, it's standard operation, um, standard maintenance procedures. And of course, there's some uh, seasonal uh, operations that, that come this time of year, every year. Uh, I, I'm not going to go into detail for everyone. Um, drainage items, as you can see, the last few reports, I've been including a table with all of our construction drains. So that includes section four, uh, so new drains and section 78. So that's uh, uh, an improvement to an existing drain. So they're all listed there when the petition or um, uh, request for improvement was filed, uh, current status, and then next steps. So that's all the drains uh, that are happening through the township. And then of course, there's various maintenance drains where um, don't require a section four, section 78. Um, I don't list them individually because they're kind of ongoing. Um, I've also listed in a table, so you'll see down 22, uh, 2022 projects. So these are projects that were in the 2022 20, uh, budget and have carried over to this year. Um, and then we move on to the next table that include all of the 2023 capital projects. Uh, and I'd like to identify um, a, a couple, a few of them within that table. Uh, and ex as well as one in the 2022 table. Um, so the first one I, I want to draw the attention to is the uh, NAVU and Confeder Confederation Line um, intersection project. Um, so just a little bit of history on that project. It was initiated by council in May of 2019, where uh, uh, council directed staff to initiate conversations with the Lambton Public Works Department on the potential scope of uh, reconfiguration of the intersection, including in obtaining as traffic study needs at the intersection, which was done. Um, this study concluded that within a five-year horizon, lane widening of all approaches uh, to accommodate a through right lane and exclusive left turn lane be selected as the preferred functional design uh, alternative. Um, traffic lights were not recommended at the time of the study, which was June, 2020. However, at any time, council has the right to, to make whatever decision they feel appropriate. And as part of the design, we've made the decision to plumb in the lights, so to speak, where there'll be conduit underneath the lane. So if council at any time or if conditions warrant, uh, traffic lights could be installed at that location. Um, so in 2021, there was $25,000 added to the, the, the budget for engineering. And of course, uh, following the next year, an engineering firm was selected um, called BT Engineering uh, for the design firm that would be uh, carrying out the design. Since then, we've been working with them, uh, coming up with the designs. Um, if you uh, then go to the attachment within the report, uh, it, it gives you a snapshot of the intersection, uh, notably drawing, it's called H or HV01 and HV02. So those are the drawings. I'll give you a second to fire those up. I will note that north is to the right, which means up is to the west. So if you can wrap yourself around that, um, you'll see that on the second illustration on that page, that is the most northerly leg. And note that it's all barrier curb. It's barrier curb from the intersection, heading north all the way to Grogan's first uh, entrance into their business. On the next page, so, so that's labeled HV-02, um, that shows north is up. So it's, it's kind of illustrating the leg, the westerly leg that's in front of Land and Mutual. You'll also note that is, it's also barrier curb, which uh, barrier curb does not allow any parking. Um, and, uh, you know, there's added safety factors for, for pedestrians. So I did want to, uh, to point that out as well. We do have some, uh, sanitary 
installation that will allow for future expansion. So to prevent having to rip up the intersection if and when we require the expansion uh, to go through the intersection. Um, any questions regarding the intersection design? Oh, I will carry on with a couple other things, but I'd like to open it I up. Guess, I guess I have one question, Andrew, in, in watching the, that whole piece of, of roadway on Navu, and even though we have the no parking signs up, people continue to park. And I think you'll find people will always continue to park, uh, to certain people will anyways. I was wondering if there's any room in this design for a couple parking spots away from the intersection because people are continue to do it. They're going to do it anyways. I've had a couple requests for some maybe available parking along there. Is that something that could be incorporated into this uh, design? If it was the desire of council, um, yes, parking could be included in the design at this stage. It It, it is a county road. But yeah, the township has jurisdiction over parking along Nebu. I did have a discussion with Jason Cole, who's uh, the general manager of infrastructure that looks after our county road system, and asked him if that would be something that could be looked at. He said it could be. I think uh, Amanda's had a discussion about that as well as uh, Andrew. That, that was my only thing. Uh, people continue to park. They're always going to park. It'd be nice if we could have a couple of parking spots that would be deemed to be safe obviously not interfering with the intersection or any of the safety issues there. And I was told that's something that could be put in place. Um, they would also help that one local business uh, as well, who's got concerns with no parking. I mean, that always was the way it was when, uh, when the new business went in, but I guess I'm just, uh, I'm throwing it out there and uh, knowing that it is possible if that was something council wanted to look at, we're not talking about multiple spots, but where there'd be two spots where somebody could pull over potentially and like I say, they're going to do it anyways, is my fear. And the shoulders just aren't wide enough. That's the biggest problem we got right now. They're not they're not wide enough. They're not strong enough to support the weight of those vehicles. So, Councillor Westgate. Yeah, I'm not so sure it's the problem <clears throat> with the shoulders holding the weight. It's the problem with the sight line along there. If we were going to do that, I think we sh the business should throw in some money because it's not helping anybody in the community but him. <laughs> And if they were willing to put some into it, I, I'd consider it better. But uh, I, I do not like seeing the trucks parked along there. They could park on the other side, maybe going out of town. If we could get some parking on the other side, it might be better because you, it doesn't block the, the trucks coming from that way or the vehicles coming from the, the north is bad when you're pulling out, even off Confed, if you're going to the west. So I would like to see the property, the business throw in something and maybe put it on the other side if it was possible. Yeah, and again, the reason I bring up the shoulders, because that was the information given to me by Jason Cole about the shoulders and the weight. Of course, the sight lines are always something that we're concerned with, but it is the shoulders that they're concerned with when you talk about moving back from the intersection and the weight of some of these transport trucks that are pulling over and some of these very large uh, vehicles with large uh, trailers and so on attached. So that was his words, not mine. That was one of the concerns. Um, it's something we can always ask a repair to do. Um, again, most repairs will always push back that I'm paying my taxes anyways. I'm sure that's part of what you'd get, but I'm not saying you can't ask. Um, but that was just something that I wanted to ask Andrew. Um, I was I was curious what it would take to put in just a couple spots because my concern is people are going to park there anyways we don't want an accident to happen and to be very honest with you our bylaw enforcement is very very weak at best when it comes to dealing with that situation so i don't think you're going to find too many people that are going to be deterred by enforcement because really to be honest with you i mean staff has tried hard to get um, enforcement but it's just very hard to get that enforcement that we need to really um, enforce that bylaw, not just there, but throughout the municipality. So that was just my question. I wanted to bring it up and see if there was a flavor for a couple safe spots and uh, see what uh, potentially it would take. I mean, do we have an idea on cost, Andrew, if we were to try to do something like that? Probably not. No, at this stage, we don't have any anticipated costs for additional parking. Mr. Westgate. The other thing I've think we should look at as lights. They have lights in Wyoming there and our corner here is much busier and traffic going through faster than where they have the lights in Wyoming downtown. Now some worse. 
I don't know if lights are the answer or what the answer is. Uh, obviously, we're not going to get another uh, roundabout there, but um, we definitely need something to slow the transfer coming down. They hit that Presbyterian church and they just floor it. And I, there's been a few axes there, but one of these days is going to be a real serious one. I, I agree with Jerry. I think we need to look at how to slow that traffic down in the area in general also. Yes. So again, this project being on way on its way already and substantially on its way. I mean, this is our one opportunity to make some changes if we want to. I think the timing's everything, Andrew. Am I correct on that? Yeah, I, I would say that uh the council will have to give the final approval before it does go ahead. So it's not going to just end at this opportunity. You know, you'll have to give the green light for this project to move ahead. But we they're, they're considering this last set of drawings at 90%. So so maybe maybe what we should be asking for is maybe a, a costing of what it would take to put that lighting in place. Uh, also, maybe uh, potentially what it would take to put a couple spots in, parking spots in for council's consideration before we go too far on this. So I guess I'm looking at council to see if they agree with that uh, with that type of uh, direction. Councilor Manning. I just think it's important to note that if we do uh, look into parking, that it's the type of parking. It's not just, there's no lack of parking there. There's an entire parking lot for the business in question. It's a matter of the type of parking. It uh, tends to be gravel trucks and transport trucks that park there. So I think it's really important to make sure that it addresses that issue, either from deterrence or, or giving a place for that type of parking. Very, very good point, Councillor. So as far as this particular piece of business, um, are we good with giving some direction um, on to look at those two things and uh, hand, have Andrew report back to us? Is that clear enough for you, Andrew, or do you want more clarification? I'm going to ask for slight clarification, just uh, kind of what Councillor Manning just alluded to. So would the two spots be for gravel trucks and transport trucks, or are we talking a passenger vehicle? My, my thinking was passenger vehicles. Um, again, if you have two spots, I mean, there's always the risk somebody's going to park there that maybe isn't. But um, that was my my thinking. I mean, again, I'm open to looking at it from a larger vehicle standpoint, too, as long as it's far enough down and out of the sight lines. That would be my thought, because, again, we can't interfere with the intersection. Jerry, Councilor Westgate. My thought would be keep the passenger cars in on the lot and have only truck parking, have the truck parking one spot back in front of Grogan's back that far going this way, and maybe a couple on the other side where they could get off the highway enough and onto the side of the road so you could park two transport trucks and put up signs, trucks only. Because it's the trucks that are causing the problem. It's not the vehicles there. And I think that's probably more important than looking at lights right now. And it shouldn't cost a whole lot to make the shoulder a little wider or the approach a little wider, the turning lane, and uh, and put something in that will hold up to trucks. Well, that's a very good point. And uh, you're right. That's probably half the, half the problem I got, if not more so. So. Um, we might as well look at the lighting if we're looking at it now anyways to see what the costing is on that. So the direction would be uh, to look at the parking situation for the transport trucks and also look at the lighting for the corner. Is everybody good with that as far as direction? Okay. Do you want a motion, Madam Clerk, or do you want is this direction a good enough? A motion? No directions. Directions fine. Okay. We'll leave it at that. Thank you, Andrew, for your report. Unless anybody has any other questions. Andrew, you're not quite done. Go ahead. Thank you, Mayor Case. Uh, just a couple more items to highlight. So Zion Line project is is underway. Um, we did receive a complaint about the quality of asphalt that was getting uh, placed on the road, uh, and these these concerns were brought to both the contractor and the and the on site inspector. Uh, Spreet Associates is uh, ensuring that the quality of construction meets um, the specifications and service level that uh, you know that the township expects. Um, and that's through full-time inspection and contract administration. So they're on site every day watching. Um, and of course, there's there's testing of materials. The other item I want to uh, address is the Township of Warwick uh, gravel application has been completed for the 2023 season. Uh, following the gravel application, 
uh, dust control was added uh, to all the unpaved roads um, with limited precipitation for the month of May and a little bit into June. Uh, we've we've noticed that there's that the gravel roads are pretty dusty. Um, we are hopeful that with this moisture we have now, uh, that that should help. Um, um, but I want to add that the township has exhausted all the allocated budget uh, for dust control this season. And if council want wished to explore additional applications, um, direction be required. Uh, I'll also add that um, calcium. The dust, the dust dust control application does require moisture in the road. So if you're going to add a second, if if they directed Public Works to put a second application, you would need moisture in the road. So it may not solve the issue. And uh, I'll open it up for questions. Well, thank you, Andrew. Any questions for Andrew and his report? They're in good shape. Yeah. Uh, I've traveled a lot of them in the last for one job touring around and. Our roads are in a lot better shape than some of our neighbors. Um, I think hopefully the rain will make the dust control work because it is dusty. But part of the reason is, like anybody else, you put it right down the middle of the road. So the, for the longest time, people are driving with one wheel in the ditch and on the so they don't drive their car through the calcium. So that's been a lot of the dust I've noticed on first school. But now it's sealed or whatever they're just driving and the dust control hasn't been as bad or the dust hasn't been as bad. Anybody else have any questions for Andrew? Yes, Jerry, or Councilor West. I just have one other question. On um, We're putting a lot of guardrails in. I've had some farmers complain that, you know, they can't get equipment down and they're more of a deterrent. Are, are there uh, regulations where we need to put them in or... Or what do I tell the farmers when we when they tell me ask me this? Yeah, so there are regulations. So uh, during uh, part of the bridge and culvert study that's performed um, every two years as legislated, um, they're also identifying where guardrails should be installed, and and basically that's identified by a ditch that's ten feet or deeper from the road. So. If you have a ditch that's 10 feet or lower um, or deeper uh, and you don't have guardrail, the township is open for liability, you know, if there happened to be a motor vehicle accident at that location. So that's why they're being identified and installed. Over our insurance company and the uh, the province are asking us to do that. That's correct. The, there's a ditch out on Cyan Line oh, to the... Uh, Yes, it's. Are we going to put a guardrail up there at some time? That's one that I always I always thought we needed a guardrail on. Is that is the current situation where it's really narrow now? Yeah. You know what I, I think would be best if I if I looked at it and came back. Um, I'm pretty sure that's identified, but I wouldn't want to misspeak. I'm quite sure it would have been identified, but it's fairly deep down into that ditch there, and there's a concrete curb up on each side. Like, if we're going to put guardrails up, I think that road's traveled more than a lot, and that one could use one. All right. Any other any other questions, Councilor Morris? One question, Andrew, you mentioned about a 10 foot deep ditch. Was that mean like all around Long Churchill, we should have a guardrail the whole length of the road? Because it's got to be over 10 feet. Uh, oh, you're referring to the McKay drain? Yeah. Um, that's something I could look into, but I, I don't I don't know that the depth there would okay. would qualify. Right. Okay, anybody else? Any questions? Oh, sorry, Trevor. I'm going to throw Andrew a curveball. 2021, we ordered a tandem. Is there any update on that? Yes, uh, I can update council. It has landed at Viking, which is the um, supplier responsible for the snow equipment. It landed there, uh, I would say, around March 28th. So, yes, it's that's the current update. 
Okay, one more time. Anybody else? Great. Well, thank you for your report, Andrew. And uh, we're all thanking the good Lord himself for the rain that we got. And we're hoping that, uh, that that's going to help uh, cut down on some of those dusty roads because we were all getting lots of complaints on that. And maybe in the future, uh, in future budgets, maybe we're going to have to look with the continuing changes in weather patterns and everything, maybe take a look and see uh, what we allocate in the budget for for dust control into the future, maybe maybe sometimes um, allowing enough for maybe two applications in the budget, just something that we maybe have to discuss in times uh, coming forward. Because again, if you live on a live on a rural road, there's nothing worse than that dust. I know you always expect a certain amount, but uh, it can be an awful nasty situation when you get into these dry spells. So thank you very much for your report. I appreciate it. And uh, we'll move on. So a uh, motion to receive and file the report itself. Thank you, Councillor Morris, seconded by Councillor Westgate. All in favor? Perfect. Thank you, Andrew. Okay. Geez, Andrew, you're not going too far, are you? So we're going to go to I, and that's the Burnham Line asphalt replacement. And there's a recommendation there um, for Council's consideration. Anybody have any questions or comments before we look at the recommendation? If not, we have a recommendation before you to consider. Council. Deputy Mayor. Moved by Deputy Mayor Kallenberg, seconded by Councillor Manning. Further discussion? All in favor? That's carried. Thank you. Okay, let's go down to um, J. This is a call for 41. And uh, there's also a recommendation with that as well. How does Council wish to deal with this piece of business? Deputy Mayor? That's quite a difference in price, just noticing. So, the recommendation is uh, before you uh, at $35,110 for Theo Vandenberg. How does Council wish to deal with that recommendation? Councillor Manning. I make a motion that we move with the recommendation. Seconded by Councillor Westgate. Further discussion? All in favor? That's carried. Okay, let's go to K. And this is the uh, tender to award the tender for the Wolvet drain. And uh, we would need a mover and a seconder to that if council agreed. Moved by Councillor Morris, seconded by Deputy Mayor Kallenberg. Further discussion? All in favor? That's carried. And then we will go to um, L and uh, pardon me, I, and uh, it's the Blue Water Power Shareholders General Meeting. And uh, there's uh, basically uh, two motions in that one, I believe. No, pardon me, there's only one. I uh, would be looking for a mover and a seconder to that, unless there's any questions. This company does an incredible job year after year in uh, paying our municipality back uh, very, very, very good dividends on our investment from back in like 2000. So uh, it's, a, it's an incredible, it's an incredible experience for us and they do a great job. So this is basically just, uh, uh, basically it's uh, us saying that we agree with what they're doing and to carry on and uh, to keep uh, Mr. Goodhill as our um, minority shareholder representative. So I guess I'm looking for moved by Councillor Westgate, yes. seconded by Councillor Morris. All in favor? That's carried. Thank you. Any new business? No, nope. seeing none. Okay. So I'm looking for a motion to move to in camera pursuant to section 239 of the Municipal Act 2001 to deal with 269 and 11 of the Act. Moved by Deputy Mayor Kalberg, seconded by Councillor Manny. All in favor? And now we will let the public know that we will now be going in camera and this will end the public portion of our meeting. Thank you very much for tuning in. Thank you. Thank you.